everybody, Meg Rue 31 back here for FSI DFS. We apologize last couple of days, couldn't get a couple of videos. Uh, McKinley's still under the weather, but he is doing better. He should have his voice back, be doing videos soon in my work schedule. I just couldn't um, bang these out in a timely manner for you. So trying to get this done. Um, it's Thursday morning. Got a nine game slate. It starts at um, 1235. So it's front loaded today. We've only got two games at like three o'clock on DK and two games at seven o'clock for the main. FanDuel actually added 10 games for the early one. They're using the Toronto and Boston game, which opens up some new opportunities. So stay tuned to the rest of the, to the end of this video, because when I do the breakdown session of some potential lineups that I'm looking at, we'll do FanDuel and we'll do DK, just because there's a little bit of a difference there for them. So uh, just run through these uh, games really quick. Only what the concern is maybe some light rain in Kansas City and uh, Chicago White Sox winds blowing in there. So um, could be a good um, pitching duel uh, there. And I, I think the pitching safe, but we'll get to that when we get to that game. So first game up is uh, San Diego at Cincinnati, Great American Small Park, 4.25 total on both sides. Um, pretty evenly matched. Nick Martinez and Male. Not really interested in Nick Martinez. I think Cincinnati Reds make a great um, cheap auxiliary stack today to fill in to make uh, bigger stacks work. Um, some pieces there, I would go a five person there. Joey Votto just continues to be super cheap. I never play him. He's on my never again list. He's been on my never again list for like the last three years, but I get it. Both sides, his pricing is good. He gets the splits matchup there. Um Molly isn't a bad pitcher. I have him on the fade list just because this, the Padres really don't strike out and they do have the potential to go off, especially in this ballpark. So, but I think they're a little more of a GPP stack and uh, there's a lot of other stacks I'd really consider. Um, probably low and really contrarian thing if you're playing in um, 150 max ones, it'd be good to look at. Other than that, really not interested in this game, but in Cincinnati bats to make uh, bigger stacks work. Uh, next up, we have the Milwaukee Brewers at Pittsburgh Pirates. We have Freddie Peralta and Quintana. Peralta struggled, but this is a good place to get right. It's a pitcher's park, um, very low total. Um, looking at the, uh, it looks like Pittsburgh might be back to full strength here. And their pricing is quite high for a team that, um, you know, is not one of the better ones in uh, Major League Baseball. You think it, the price would be a little bit cheaper, but so I'm not really interested in them. It's a leverage stack. I think uh, Peralta makes sense as an SP2 on most um, slates, and I think the Brewers could definitely potentially be a uh, decent stack against Quintana. Uh, next up, we have the Colorado Rockies going um, to Philadelphia to play the Phillies. Uh, Sensatella, pretty uh, neutral splits pitcher, they're not a great pitcher. So I think, you know, Philadelphia is one of the best stacks on the slate for the batter. Zach Wheeler has been really bad to start out the season, but he's got a lot of talent. And I see a lot of um, sites touting him today just for his pricing on uh, DK and, and FanDuel um, as being like one of the best price for dollar pitchers. I think he ranks like fourth out of my choices. I think GPP only. I don't really trust him. I would prefer to pay up for Ver Verlander or Kopech and or Peralta um, as an SP2. Not super interested here. I know the Rockies are mostly right-handed lineup. They hit, they don't do well on the road against righties. Um, wind is blowing in at like 18 miles per hour, 53 degrees. So it's not a great hitting environment necessarily. So I, I understand playing Wheeler, but I don't think I'm going to have many shares of him. Maybe I'll just throw one line out there just in case. Uh, Marlins and the Nationals, Trevor Rogers, Patrick Corbin. I think both pitchers work for cheap aspect. Um, definitely some strikeouts in this Marlins, um, even though they have a really high total at 4.42. I don't believe that if you're um, doing uh, sports prop betting. I think I bet the under on, on that one. Corbin just hasn't really blown up a ton, and he's been not super bad this year, so I, I just don't – see that total. Um, Rogers on the other side, again, Washington doesn't super impress me. I think a, a nine game slater is kind of canceling this game out. Really not interested in both pitchers unless I'm trying to do something really tricky. But I think with the Cincinnati patch, you can pay up for pitcher. You don't have to pay down as SP2 to get like big stacks in and, and everything. So I just, I don't know like why you would need these on in the context of the slate. The hitters, like some of the Marlins are cheap, but 
Jazz leading off at 5-4. I just think it's overpriced there. He's priced more than Juan Soto. And to me, like Juan Soto is a much better player. But both of them are lefty-lefty matchups. So they don't even have the split advantage. So I don't know. I'm just moving on from this. I said, Miami, a decent cheese chat. Washington, I don't even have on the board. Not interested at all today. Uh, Baltimore Orioles, New York Yankees. You have uh, Bruce Zimmerman, who is really high priced on FanDuel. I do not understand the pricing on that one. And James uh, Tyon, who's um, who's decent, I think. You know, if you want to get off the chalk of Peralta being the SP2, I think he's in the conversation as my second favorite one there. Uh, Zimmerman against the Yankees. I, I really like him. They have started to heat it up. Um, even Rizzo lefty lefty, I think I would take because once you get past him to the bullpen, I think there's some opportunities there. DJ LeMay, who is starting to find his 2019-4, Judge, Stanton, um, Donaldson. So uh, the Yankees are starting to put it together and hopefully they sustain it. I think it's a good spot here. Uh, I think they'd be my third favorite stack on the slate. Baltimore, I tie in has been good, but if you want something like kind of contrarian or something kind of cheap, if you're playing, like trying to stack every single team on here, I, I think that's something to look at. But um, out of cheap stacks, I think they'd be like my least favorite there. Moving on, uh, Seattle Mariners, Tampa Bay. You have Chris Flexion and probably an opening situation. And then maybe Jeffrey Springs. I've seen a bunch of people. I'm just going to fade to Tampa Bay pitching situation. Not very, really interested in it. I don't think you have anybody that goes long enough. You don't need to go that far down. Like I said, on the slate to just use the Cincinnati bats as, as fill-ins and you can get like a full stack in and, and pay up for pitching. And we'll show you that in the roster breakdown section. So I don't think you need to dump or die for any of this Tampa Bay pitching. Flex on the other side, really not interested in. I think uh, Tampa Bay bats would be my favorite uh, GPP stack up against him today uh seattle bats um not really interested in any of those um jp crawford silently has been doing really really well recently he's on a hot streak um you're gonna pay for it though at five four for shortstop but if, if you just want to differentiate your lineup if you think a lot of people are going to take franco or correa or um or somebody else there and, and just want somebody to completely different that's in really good form I, I think um it's a one-off there that makes a lot of sense other than that, i'm not touching any of the rest of the seattle bats because when you have these bullpen game situations or opener and stuff they mix and match so well against them that they kind of neutralize any splits advantage so not super interested there uh detroit and minnesota you have um scoobal and against bailey oler um Low totals here, wind blowing at 13 miles per hour, only 45 degrees, it's going to be a cold one out there. Chance of light precipitation, but I think the game will be over. It's only like 20% by that time. I think Olber is a decent, cheap pitcher. I think Schoolball would probably be my third favorite if you want to uh, pivot off of Verlander or Kopech. And definitely some strikeouts in this Minnesota lineup. They're much better with Buxton back in there. but still have like Garlic and, and Kepler, although he had a decent game yesterday um Celsius, you know like there, there's definitely some k's here so i think we're you're okay playing that even though um it's mostly a, a righty um split disadvantage for the the pitcher against a righty lineup uh, i'm okay with that like i said older detroit can strike out too so i think he's um if you're looking for somebody i think definitely prefer peralta or try on against uh, baltimore but I, I think he's in the conversation, too, if you're just trying to differentiate your lineup. Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers, uh, Justin Verlando and Martin Perez. Definitely not playing Martin Perez. Uh, Houston's my favorite stack against him, especially lefty with some of the righty bats here. Even though they don't have Altuve and they lost like Cray and stuff, there's still a lot around there. Even though Bregman really sometimes doesn't even hit left-handed pitching well, even though it is a split advantage, I think I'm going to be on him today. And Justin Verlander against Texas, even though Texas has been – better um definitely uh and they'll probably throw out a really lefty lineup there with like miller and willie calhoun and nate low and cole calhoun in the lineup um i think he'll be fine there get some strikeouts go deep in the game uh they have a 4.48 uh total Texas only has 3.52, so I think definitely he's got win equity there. It's definitely a favorite pitcher. On the DK slate, on um, FanDuel slate, you have uh, 
the Blue Jays pitcher Manoa in the equation. He's only like a hundred dollars off of him against the Red Sox. And um, so I think it's really, really close there. Um, oh, we'll talk about that when we get to that game. So uh, bat wise, like I said, a Houston stack is primarily what we're going to build with um, Justin Verlander on both sides are super cheap on, um, on FanDuel. DraftKings are definitely reasonable with McCormick leading off, uh, has a splits advantage, only 2-6. I, that's a really good price there. And I think the biggest decision is like, which outfielder do you take? Do you take Brantley? Do you take Alvarez? Do you take Tucker? They're all lefty lefty matchup but Perez isn't going to last that long they'll get to the bullpen eventually so just basing on I think you just throw one of them in there for whatever your uh, pricing is Siri might be hitting up higher in the lineup too he's only two eight can make some things work too okay uh, finally on the DK slate we have Kansas City Royals and uh, Chicago White Sox like I said seven total here 302 398 for the White Sox White Sox are banged up missing guys out of their lineup Brad Keller if you wanted to play him i kind of get it but at um at eight eight and dk like i would rather play um some of the other guys we, we talked about here especially if there is a little bit of a weather concern but copatch definitely against this kansas city team who has just completely lost it and can't figure out how to hit and has some strikeouts besides salvador perez i think definitely if the weather looks good Definitely a very safe option and um, really like them there. So, like I said, on the FanDuel slate, we have the Boston Red Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays. You have Whitlock and Manoa. Um, really like Manoa here. Red Sox have have struggled. Uh, the lefties in the lineup just beside Deaver. Verdugo's moved up a little bit. Jackie Bradley, but he strikes out a lot. So, really don't see um, ton. And Manoa's off to a really good start becoming um, – very good pitcher, possibly a Cy Young candidate this year. So I think um, someone definitely to consider there. So like I said, Verlander, Kopech, school ball would be the pitchers I consider. Wheeler, I see a lot of attraction on throughout the industry. Um, I'm not personally in love with him, but I put him in their GPP for this discussion. Middle range, Peralta, Tylon, Ober, Flexen, maybe if you want to take a dart on Keller. I get it, but I think he's way high priced at eight eight um, for for what you're going to get there. Cheap guys, Corbin Rogers, um, Quintana could be a dart. Nick Martinez could be a dart, but I don't really think you need to go there. I don't think you need to go with like whatever four K guy uh, Tampa Bay might throw out there as a starter or a long reliever. And then fading Male, uh, just no strikeout upside against San Diego, and they could go off in that ballpark. Sense of health, um, I think Philly's a good matchup in there. Zimmer against the Yankees and Perez against um, Houston. No, no, no. Top stacks, like I said, are Houston, Philly, New York, and Milwaukee. GPP wants to consider potentially would be Tampa Bay, uh, Minnesota, uh, the White Sox potentially against Keller because they have shown that they can hit, but I just think the hitting conditions and stuff, I might even move San Diego up in the rankings there above them, just be, being in the very American small park. I, and in fact, I think when I, I post this for our site, um, San Diego will be above the, the White Sox there. And like cheap ones, Cincinnati, I think definitely makes sense. If um, you think Cincinnati's gonna be chalk, then Detroit, Miami, and Baltimore pieces from there could make lineups work. And then for leverage stacks against popular pitchers, um, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Colorado, or Texas, but don't really love any of them today. So let's look at some lineup breakdowns and we'll get you on your way. Like I said, we're doing both DK and FanDuel here. So on FanDuel, or first, sorry, DK, I think, you know, you're going to pay up for JV or Kopeka, um, put Peralta in there. There's a lot of punt catchers today. I think um, with Zunino still banged up, um, Pinto for Tampa Bay should get the... Uh, start there. Maldonado is only 2 1. So if you're not using five Houston guys um, in your stack, he goes there. And then there's a, a couple other guys in the 2.2 to 2K range. So just, just punt catcher today. Uh, I think that's the, the best move. So I'm taking Guriel Diaz at second base. Uh, Bregman, if you don't, if you're worried about Bregman uh, against left handed pitching, it seems like a bad trend recently. I think he snaps out today. I think he's perfectly fine. It makes sense in the stack. Manny, um, as a one-off from San Diego, is a good play there. Shortstop, just figure out um, 
who you want to fill in uh, on that one there. And then I want to take some a Yankee bat, either Judge or Stanton. McCormick, I definitely are playing it is, if he's leading off. Uh, if he's not in the lineup, then Siri, if he's leading off, can go there too. Um, and then I'm going to figure out what other Houston outfield I want, depending on how much money I have left after my construction. So Alvarez, Brantley, Tucker, I know it's all lefty, lefty matchup there. If you need to throw Siri in there, if you want to pay up for like a, a shortstop today, if you want to take um, Crawford from San Diego or uh, Franco there or Cray or somebody and don't have enough, then I'm okay playing Siri there also. For FanDuel, I think, you know, your choices. Uh, I, I like Manoa's matchup better, um, but JV, I don't think you can lose either way. I think I'll build um, a lineup with both of them and then split my cash 50-50 on each one of them. And then your pieces here are Bregman, McCormick, and then figure out what um, Houston outfielder works. Again, Alvarez or, or Brantley for that. And then the key piece here is Diaz because Diaz and FanDuel can, I believe he's got eligibility at like second, third and shortstop or first, second or shortstop, but he definitely could be a second or shortstop. So whatever um, piece you want there. And then here you can fill in um, the Yankees and you could put them at second base and, uh, or no, actually put DJ LeMahieu at second base and then you can, um, fill in like judge and stand in the outfield or whoever you, you want there or a Rizzo at first base. Um, however you want to try to, to fill that out with the Yankees go in there. Nice. Philly goes in there. Decent too. You add um, pick J2 or Amuto or Hoskin at first or when uh, Segura at second um, shortstop uh, put Diaz there and then whatever outfielders you want, take a, take a one off in utility. If there's somebody else you want in the lineup. So um, that's what I like for cash there. Uh, you can also, so going for the GPP one, let me see if I get this to open up. There we go. Uh, I think, you know, you can go JP and Copacta for this GPP lineup. Um, again, I'm punting catcher. And then I think, you know, if you go India, a farmer, Naquin, uh, Fraley's also a different one, he might move up in the lineup with the splits advantage um for Cincinnati so throw Cincinnati guys in there and then you can put whoever else you want in here um like I said I like Milwaukee maybe to to pop in there for um Moran you can use for uh Cincinnati or the third baseman that matches your stack so again if you want to put like Houston in here Philly in here with this one to pay up for both pitchers Milwaukee uh Tampa Bay, like I said, I, I like them also. Lots of different options to fill in with these cheap um, Cincinnati pieces that will get you up for both pitchers. Look at FanDuel, I'm gonna go Kopech to GPP, and then I'm gonna take the Blue Jays here. Flat is like really cheap, Brissett, Springer, and then decide if you wanna go Timo Homerandis, Collins, it might be batting fourth or fifth. Um, he's really cheap, has a splits advantage, can throw him in the utility spot there. Um, Indian Naquin for Cincinnati to make it work. And then, you know, if you want to pay off for Manny Rears at third base or take another one off there, uh, just lots of, of different ways you can go. So hopefully that helps you out for this uh, nine game, 10 game slate that's early for Thursday. And I uh, appreciate you watching. If you want more information on FSI DFS, go to the description of our video. All the links to our Discord and our site are there. I'm Michael Ruler 31 Leave some uh, questions um, below. If you have anything, we'll try to help you out with the site there or hit me up on Twitter at Michael 31 And good luck today. We'll see you next time.